Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning and welcome to our Microsoft Teams Trilogy series, uh, second session, Go Beyond Communication and Collaboration, utilizing Microsoft Teams to its best potential. I'm Shivani. I drive marketing functions at MB and I'm your webinar host today. Uh, with us today, we have uh, Neeraj Kumar Pandey, who is uh, M365 Teamwork Certified Professional and Neeraj has successfully run over 1200 batches of Teams adoption training sessions and has trained more than 20,000 users on Microsoft Teams. Neeraj will be driving today's uh, webinar, which is focused around uh, demonstrating how Teams is so much more than just chat or file sharing or audio video calling application. And Neeraj will be showcasing the true power of Microsoft Teams with respect to modern meetings, intelligent communication, and how you can maximize the potential of Microsoft Teams with customizations and of course extensibilities. Supported by that will be some real world customer success stories demonstrating how one of our customers leveraged Teams to control their end to end sales cycle. Also, I would like to inform our audience that uh, we have rolled out our no cost teams adoption trainings for businesses. That is, if you have teams or if you want to procure licenses and are worried on how to get started, we can train your employees on Microsoft Teams at absolutely no cost. That's our bit in the times when seamless communication and collaboration is much needed for productive remote working. Before we begin, I would uh, request you all who have joined anonymously to please mention uh, your name in organization name in the right side on chat bar so that uh, we would know that you were here and we can reach out to you if you would be interested in the no cost teams adoption trainings for your business. Also your question and answers, uh, uh, please post them uh, through the chat bar on the right side uh, and we will be addressing them in the Q&A segment. Uh, I think we can get started Neeraj. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you Shivani. Thank you for such a wonderful introduction. So good morning to all of you, to all the participants who have joined this session on. Uh, this is our second session on Microsoft Teams where we will be, uh, you know, the agenda is still different as we compare to the last one. So first, I would like to thank you all for joining in and, you know, taking your time uh, out of your uh, hectic schedule and joining in for this 45 minutes of session. Uh, before we start, I would like to, you know, have uh, run through you a small recap what we, what we discussed in the last session, okay? I will not take your more than two to three minutes to uh, take a recap and take you to the past what we discussed on Microsoft Teams, what Microsoft Teams is all about, right? So, you know, Teams is an app which uh, streamlines net teamwork. So we agree, we we know that it is an obvious definition, but that is not an inc uh, but that is an incomplete description. OK, now coordinating with multiple persons is a teamwork. We completely agreed with that, but there are plethora of apps available to collaborate uh, in the market with others. But then what is so what is so unique or what is so peculiar about Microsoft Teams? So Teams is an app which uh, helps you work with all types of technologies. So it is not just a teamwork with other people. It is with multiple technologies as well. So we can say that Teams is equal to work with multiple persons and technologies. Now Teams app itself does not enforce any specific technology on you. So that uh, you know if you are using multiple applications on your day to day activity, for example, you can use OneDrive and then uh, other Microsoft storage services directly into Microsoft Teams. You can use Forms or Survey Monkey for surveys, use Excel or uh, planner or Jira for a task. Then you can use Visio or MindMaster for mind maps, then Excel, Power BI or any other BI tool for uh, reports. 
So whatever components you need to work effectively, use them. There is no restriction, but put them all together for easy access using Teams application. So it is a universal container rather than a restrictive application. So again, Teams is also called as a universal container. So you can add tabs for the following uh, for the applications at the time of, uh, you know, the, that has been uh, listed in the February. There were around 140 applications uh, that was uh, allowed at that particular time. But today it has more than 200 applications that can be easily integrated with your Microsoft Teams. OK, and most of the applications are uh, integrated with Microsoft itself, their own application like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Planner, Sway, Forms, SharePoint and everything. OK, now each one becomes a tab. For example, you your team needs a file storage, your uh, OneNote notebooks for taking down notes, minutes of the meetings, Power BI dashboards, uh, some applications that you wanted to work on your daily basis, which can be helpful. Uh, you know, and then presentations, videos and so on. There are so many applications that you can take a leverage. Just keep adding them as a tab for each one of them. Teams is also a universal connector. It can help you to connect and display output from many applications as well. For example, uh, one incident application, uh, ticket raising application called as service. Now it is, uh, you know, readily uh, available in Microsoft Teams as a connector. You can uh, tweak something with your development team and you can, you know, pull all the records from your service now application into Microsoft Teams and a single place to work for. OK, so that was, uh, a, you know, a small recap as in what we have done in the past and in the today's session, what we will do, I will just uh, share you the agenda. So basically you can expect in today's session that uh, we will uh, work on the modern meetings. So you might have heard on, uh, you know, on most of the places or, your, you know, msn.com news that uh, modern meetings, modern meetings. Now why it is called as a modern meetings? What is this all buzz all about? Then you how you can uh, maximize the potential of teams by customizing and integrating or, you know, extensibilities that can be performed within Microsoft Teams. I have created one small video that we are working with a, with a one of our manufacturing customer that I have. I will show you in the end of the session. Then how uh, Teams is an intelligent communication when you compare it with the older version of a communication app in Office 365 that was Skype for business. As so as you already know that uh, Sky for Business will be phased out in 30th by 31st July 2021. And uh, last but not the least, how teams can bring in true business values. Now we have worked with so many, uh, we are working with so many industries and uh, there are certain industries that have leveraged the full potential of Office 365 and brought that everything into a single app that is Microsoft Teams. Now we'll not completely sit on, uh, you know, presentation i will show you a couple of uh, small small uh, animation animated ppts and then we will start with the demo on how modern meetings work in today's scenario so there are certain facts that you have to uh, know about that is working and learning from home inspires people to turn on video that is 2x more than before the outbreak now this data was being uh, taken by 31st march the the data for the current month uh, is in process and we will be getting it in the in the next month so that it, you will get a more picture uh, how things have been turned around when uh, you know in such a pandemic situation or in such a pandemic outbreak. Now there is another fact that have been uh, posted by Microsoft that is uh, you know before the pandemic outbreak was happening uh, there was data which says by March 12. Uh, there was 560 million minutes in a single day, March 16, 900 million and by 31st March, the, the data exponentially raised from 900 million to 2.7 billion minutes uh, of meetings that is happening in a single day. Now, believe me, this has been again might have doubled or tripled in at this particular time. Okay, 
So we have to just wait for a data that might get published in the next month. So that was the artifacts that I would like to share with you. Now let's uh, jump to the demo part. Okay. So I have. Uh, you are well aware of this particular uh, interface that we have uh, uh, discussed in the last in the previous session. Today I will explain you uh, what are the different stages of uh, Microsoft Teams meeting. OK, now in which scenario what you can do and how things have been changed around uh, while Microsoft Teams being launched. OK, now there are a couple of ways that you can uh, host a meeting in Teams. OK, now there are uh, different types of meetings that happen uh, on uh, Teams application. One is ad hoc meeting where you, you know, uh, quickly uh, ad hoc meeting and also we call it as a, you know, impromptu meetings where you can quickly add few people. Uh, for that you have to go to calendar and this will be the interface. This will be the interface of your calendar application. Now Microsoft Teams calendar is synchronized with your Outlook calendar. So whichever uh, appointment or meetings that you have created in your or accepted in your Outlook will also get synchronized in your Microsoft Teams. Now the types of uh, meetings that I was discussing. The first one is uh, impromptu meetings where you can quickly click on meet now where it will quickly create one subject name. OK, I will say allow and I can decide what I want. OK, now here you can see the subject name over here. You can change that so we can say budget. Discussion for your. 20 and. One and then I can. Uh, you know, it's better that you mute unmute uh, mute yourself and then you click on join now. Now here is the next step that you will keep adding people fine. Now you know who the people are now depending on the uh, requirement. You can start adding them one by one from here. So you know these uh, things. This thing is called as an ad hoc meeting or an impromptu meeting where you quickly ask people to join in. OK, now now it's it's time that you start using teams to change the way you work. For example, uh, just imagine when you know these things were not uh, there like pandemic before the pandemic outbreak. Uh, every person was having an in person meetings. Uh, they were having in person trainings where you know uh, large audience was there up to let's let's consider 250 participants and then there was a town hall events where your CEO your MD addresses your uh, organization to um, you know to motivate yourself to motivate your organization. And then uh, if he wants to uh, discuss something, if he wants to share some, you know, what are the things that we have uh, achieved in the last year or in the last quarter? So there was a town hall event and then, uh, you know, last but not the least, there was a face to face support. Now these four things have been changed to, uh, you know, uh, some different terminologies in today's uh, in today's actual time. Now in person meetings have been changed to virtual meetings. In person trainings have been changed to virtual webinars. Town hall events have taken place by live events and face to face support has been taken by the virtual support. OK, now the last piece that I said that was virtual support. We will discuss on this in more in the next session. OK, uh, where you know I we can create a bot and you can ask as many questions uh, depending on your requirement. Fine. Let's focus on uh, the piece that we have here uh, gathered together that is on meetings. So the first is about uh, you know virtual webinar. Let's discuss about it. Now what are the things uh, uh, a normal meeting can uh, have? For example, it has three stages. OK, the first stage is before the meeting, during the meeting and after the meeting. So we will discuss all these three stages. Uh, you know one by one. The first is before the meeting that uh, what we call it as a uh, that uh, you know we can say that these are the best practices that you can perform while uh, your uh, your meeting to be more have more effective uh, you know when you come together in a Microsoft Teams. So first you can always 
schedule a new meeting fine you can do it from your teams app directly or else you can have it from your outlook application now let's let's do it from here so we will give a name uh, let's say uh, ms teams training now here you can add up to 250 participants okay not more than that since that is the limit of microsoft teams meetings uh, okay there can be more not more there should not be more than 250 participants now let's let's add people over here you decide uh, the time and the you know the date now apart from these two things you can also take a look on the scheduling assistant where it will give you the free and busy availability of that user in your organization now this is uh, since this is a demo tenant i won't be able to give you the exact details over here but in your environment it will be more crisp and clear so that you can take a look uh, as a you know uh, as a first stage before you schedule any meeting uh, if you think that this time is getting clashed so you can adjust the scheduling assistant as per your requirement fine you uh, communicate the agenda whatever you wanted to uh, write over here so let's uh, this this session is about teams app and its unique features Fine. Once you are done with all these things, you can click on send. Fine. And as soon as you send it, it will be get added into your calendar. OK, now. Uh, we are still in the first stage, so uh, when you click or whenever a news meeting is been scheduled, there will be bunch of things that will get added into that team. OK, so that is the reason we call it as an intelligent communication. Fine. Microsoft Teams is an intelligent communication. Why? Because if you can notice, there are certain things that have added into that Teams calendar invitation. Like, for example, if you wanted to give a heads up to your participants before even the meeting has been started, you can talk to them over here. You don't have to wait or you know you don't have to call them. Secondly, if there is any files that you have to share so that you know when the participants come to that meeting, or whichever the meeting that you have uh, set uh, for them they can have a you know they can uh, do their homework and come to the meetings so that it becomes more effective and more efficient apart from that there is one more option that i would like to uh, share with you which is very important that is meeting options now what does this meeting option does when you click on meeting options, you will see the lobby settings and the presenter settings. That means who can bypass the lobby. Now you might have seen this, uh, you know, n number of times. Whenever you join a meeting from your, you know, from your vendors or if you are uh, scheduling a meeting for your, you know, for your clients. So those people, when they join, they, uh, you know, they, they wait in the lobby, but uh, these can be, uh, it has uh, both the advantages and disadvantages. Advantages is if the meeting participants are less than 15 and 10, then it is OK. You can make people uh, wait in the lobby and then you can admit them one by one. But if the participants are more than 100 or let's say 150, then you 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 will get frustrated by adding them uh, one by one every time. So it's better than depending on the uh, meeting that you are scheduling and the participant number you are uh, inviting you select them depending on your requirement so i will say everyone okay i will say who can bypass the lobby i will say everyone very important who can present generally if you are inviting anybody from your organization okay everyone within that meeting will be a presenter by default that means they can mute you OK, they can unmute you. They can present them, present their screen, even though when you are presenting the screen, they can also record the sessions. We will discuss about the recording in the in the, you know, in few minutes. But let's say you don't want to do that. Being a being a trainer, being a uh, you know, presenter, I don't want my participants to take control of those settings. What I can do, I can decide what can be the option. For example, uh, I will say only me and I will save it. 
it will automatically uh, you know distinguish the audiences between two that is one is presenter and the other is attendees as soon as you change the present uh, presenter option over here the the all the participants will be considered as an attendee and they will not get the share option i'll show you how it looks like fine now let's close this so that this till this stage or till this time we discussed the first stage that was before the training now let's move on to the next step that is uh, during the meeting now let's join it okay uh, this is the pre joined uh, environment and the behavior so what you can do you can uh, unmute yourself again depending on the requirement you can make it uh, you know as a best practice that whenever you join uh, it's a uh, uh, video uh, you know just uh, close the video and close the audio and then you join okay i will also show you the mobile experience fine so let me just pull up the screen yeah So here it is. Let's go to Teams app over here. And if you can see, you can go to the meeting. And here you can see the meeting invitation is in there. You can click on join. And then again, you can have certain settings that can be used over here. That is, for example, you can uh, start your video, you can mute yourself, and then you can use the uh, the device for your uh, you know mic or speaker so i will say join now i am facing some challenge in my phone <clears throat> I am facing some issues on my phone. So this is not happening. But in in you know in short, I can say that uh, you can join the meetings from your uh, phone as well, which will give you a whole set of features that uh, that works on your desktop application, like sharing the screen then uh, sharing a presentation sharing minutes of the meetings and so on okay now we are in the uh, you know in, uh, during the meeting so for example what what are the things that you can do during the meetings firstly you can uh, start the recording okay so let's uh, let's let's not do over here we i'll uh, yeah you will click on this and you click on start recording now uh, uh, what happened when you start the recording? It, it it gives you a heads up to all your participants that the recording has started. Okay, and uh, apart from that, you can share your screen, uh, desktop, PowerPoint, and you know there is also a whiteboard that can be used for you know uh, to explain some things on your uh, you know a complete white canvas will be visible. And no matter no matter what the size of your desktop is, it will give you the whole uh, place, whole uh, area to draw something and explain you within that Teams meeting. Let's say that you are having a internal meeting, a, a, you know, internal meeting within your organization. There is one option that can be useful to um, you know used as a minutes of the meeting. So you can start taking notes one by one. So it's not compulsion that only one person can take the minutes of the meeting notes. Everybody can do that. You click on take notes over here. <clears throat> and you know it's it's basically powered by your OneNote application, which uh, uh, which gives you all the options to do this. So I can write uh, follow ups. And this 
discuss points and then you start taking the notes one by one you can also uh, tag people over here who are uh, joined as a participant like i can tag alex and i can say please follow up with or material fine uh, so these are the things that can be very helpful while you uh, while you do the meeting within your organization within 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 your employees within your known users and uh, the best part is if the meeting you know if the meeting is over or let's say that you uh, feel that uh, you know uh, the, the meeting is completely done what you can do you can stop the recording okay now when you stop the recording what happens at the back end it it saves all your recording into microsoft stream application which is again a, a part of your uh, you know microsoft uh, office 365 suit and then you can find it over here go to stream Yeah, till that page gets loaded, the other things that are also available is, uh, you know, about uh, is about, you know, uh, creating uh, video effects. Now being an organizer, you can end the meeting. Uh, OK, now this this uh, feature is not available for all the participants who are joining in as an attendee or a presenter. This will be visible for the organizer who organizes that meeting. So sometimes it does happen that you know you forget to leave the meeting and uh, you know it, it keeps on going till uh, you realize that you are not out of that meeting. So you will end this meeting. Fine. Uh, now here it is. Uh, you can see all the recordings under your meetings option under stream and here you can see meetings uh, you know the recording is available this will be visible for all the participants whom you have added in that meeting you click on it and uh, you know uh, it, it basically creates a transcript it takes time for processing it at the back end once that processing is being completed you can see them uh, available over here it might take some time so here you can see it is saving the recording okay once this is done I will show you how you can see the tra uh, transcript that will be available or we can say captions that will be available after the meeting is uh, after the video has been processed. OK, we'll, we'll wait for it to get processed and I'll show you how things work around. Yeah, now. Now let's move to the third stage that is, uh, you know, after the after the trainings or after the meeting. So you can always see that a chat will be uh, created. That is, we call it as a MS Teams training, which we saw uh, in the calendar invitation itself. And then over here, you can find find all the things that I have been, uh, you know, discussed or been shared within the meeting or during the meeting that was uh, hosted a couple of minutes ago. Now there, there is one more feature that uh, is very interesting and very intuitive is about the video calling and video conferencing. Now this video doesn't work in your, uh, you know, let me see if, if it works in your browser. You click on meet now and there is one option called as uh, virtual background. Okay, this is not available in your uh, teams. I will show you in uh, the desktop app. I will show you in the desktop app where you go to your calendar and you select meet now. Now here. No, I can't do that. I, I won't be able to do that because live event is going on. So there is a video uh, effect that has been used in your uh, teams, uh, you know, where you can customize your background uh, as per your requirement. So most of you might be aware of this. Uh, you know, uh, blurring your background, but uh, Microsoft has added a new piece into it. That is you can. Uh, you know, you can uh, create some uh, your own customized image and bring that 
into Microsoft Teams while having uh, you know a meeting. OK, so that custom background will be available only if you're using on your desktop application. Fine. So I think the meeting has to be processed till now. Let's see. Yeah, this is taking some time. Once that is done, you can see the transcript or the captions available over here. Now it, it only captures uh, English uh, language and other six languages that are supported in Microsoft Teams. So one of them language is French. Other one is Chinese simplified. Portugal is also there. So if you are speaking in these languages, it will automatically create a uh, caption over here, which will be very, uh, you know, uh, useful to, uh, you know, search for a particular content over there. So, so for example, I'll show you in my demo or in my uh, live uh, uh, in. Let's see, I have to wait. Uh, let me go see if I have created any of them. Yeah, here it is. So whatever you have recorded will get saved directly into the cloud and it will be visible like this, okay? So if you play this, you can play it directly onto your team's application. OK, it no, uh, no need to download that video on your on your device and uh, you know uh, to play it. Uh, the best part is if, if you if you can see here, there is an option of playing the captions. So depending on uh, which lang which language that you have chosen to speak in the in, in that video, it will create a sub uh, you know captions over here. Now the best part is let's say that this, this video is uh, around one hour. OK, now rather than uh, waiting for one hour, you can search for a particular uh, word that was being used in that meeting. For example, I can see if this was used over here. It uh, it gives me, uh, you know, the complete uh, timeline where I have used uh, this particular word and I can jump to that uh, content directly rather than you know waiting for such long time and uh, you know uh, I might be used those time that uh, that could be used for some other place fine. Now uh, that was about the beating things. Now let's move to the presentation back and uh, see what we have got over there. So these are the upcoming features that is been uh, uh, getting rolled out for in Microsoft Teams. So okay, so the first is customized background, which is slowly getting rolled out. You can raise your hand in a meeting, in an ongoing meeting, to ask any question and answer, so that the presenter comes to know that you have any questions. Uh, end meeting is already been rolled out. Uh, participant report, so you can get an attendee report. Uh, in the meeting in the in the meeting after the meeting uh, there is a real time noise suppression so you know if sometimes you feel that uh, while you are speaking uh, what, and whatever you are doing in the back end people are there who are talking as well so it will automatically consider your uh, you are close to the mic and it will suppress all the uh, unnecessary voice uh, and it will be uh, your own voice will be visible to the uh, participant there will be an option called as pop out chats. You know, in Skype for business, where you double click and it opened in your, uh, you know, in your uh, as a separate window so that you can focus only for the chat and you can work on your other work as well. Now, uh, as I said, the extensibility uh, and the customization where you can use Power Apps to manage your system of records. I, I have created one small video over here which will be visible as you can see over here. There's an estimator pro uh, which is a power apps application created an app. You even you can take a leverage and you can create your own application by you know by within a you know, if you have good knowledge on Excel, it becomes very easy to start working on. You can also 
integrate Power BI dashboards. Okay, so if you're already using uh, Power BI as a separate desktop app, you can bring that workspace and integrate in Microsoft Teams as well. Forms, very useful application and very less utilized in Office 365. Uh, rather than using this, people start using Survey Monkey. But uh, I would say that uh, Form is also a very intuitive application that can be leveraged in uh, Microsoft Teams. Automate your routine tasks by using your Power Automate. And again, all these applications can be easily integrated as a tab uh, within your uh, Microsoft Teams. So here, if you can see, there's a plus button. If you click on it, it will give you multiple options uh, to add all the applications which are uh, needed. Now, uh, in the meeting section, uh, in the last uh, in the last session, we had some requ uh, questions for the devices. Whether uh, is there any other devices supported? So these are the part uh, devices which has been, you know, where Microsoft and these uh, vendors have uh, come up together and have a partnership. And uh, so here, these are the different different vendors that can be uh, where you can uh, bring these devices for, which has very uh, AI capabilities and which has already Teams application installed to it. So one of them feature is the content cameras and intelligent capture, where you can see a device is being placed just above the uh, you know whiteboard, and that whiteboard is getting. Uh, you know, displayed as a screen in your uh, live meeting, which is going on. Okay. Second is about the intelligent capture. So sometimes it happens that, you know, where you can't read the whiteboard because of the person who is standing in front of it. Fine. So, uh, then uh, how, how are the things that you are going to understand? So these devices are so intelligent that it uh, just uh, make the person transparent and uh, makes the whole whiteboard uh, visible to you just like it is happening in this particular uh, screen. Okay, so for uh, so these things are there in devices in your Microsoft Teams room devices. And then uh, this is a small video that we have done for one of our customer where we, have, where we have done their whole sales cycle in Microsoft Teams. So here you can see that uh, the first stage is we are drafting the bid you know, attaching a file and then sharing it with one of our user who will take this file and, you know, it's, it's kind of a deck that will be shared with uh, one of our customer where you can see the, the conversation is happening. Fine. So all the important things are being placed over there. Now so the second is it, it is about sellers submit the customer order. OK, now this is again the application which we have uh, created in Power App and we have integrated in your Teams application. So here now it is going for. You know the approval for my. Uh, for my seniors. And uh, you can see the estimate has been sent to the customer. Now it's time to create a sales opportunity in the CRM application that is Dynamics 365. Where you can see the parts and pricing being added. Power BI integrated with it. Okay, now it's it's time to submit the proposal for approval. Uh, the files will get added over here, and that will not be directly, uh, you know, directly uh, approved. It will go to uh, first approval, that is to the manager of this user. And here you can see there's one card that will be getting placed over here, which is again integrated in Microsoft Teams. So no context switching in uh, Teams application, and you know. Uh, you can do it. Uh, these are the adaptive cards that are, that are supported by Microsoft Teams where everything is in a proper place and in alignment. And once these things are being uh, approved, you can click over here and see. You can see the status changing from pending to approved. 
and last but not the least you can meet and close the deal by going into the meeting uh, you know coming together and enjoying the party okay so that was one of the scenarios we have done it for one of our manufacturing uh, organization okay and uh, over there uh, you know it was a complete uh, manual process but due to this it has been changed to an uh, uh, automation process okay now now it's uh, you know it's uh, all right it looked like it's a time for q and a uh over to you shivani okay thanks neeraj uh, just to let our audience know that we have focused on keeping our teams trilogy webinar series to be very very practical in a very show me how style so uh, i hope you are liking it and we will be sending you invites for next webinar session also which is scheduled for next thursday april 30th and we will be very happy to host you all again and this webinar next webinar will be around innovating with teams that is how to integrate ai and chatbots within teams and more <laughs> all right now it's time for uh, q and a neeraj uh, i'll be asking questions so we have a lot of questions from our audience uh, today uh, so let's let's begin yeah sure SS Nanda says, uh, uh, what Office 365 license is required to deploy Microsoft Teams and for live event, what licenses is required? For live event, right? Mm -hmm. For live event, you should have E1 and above. You cannot host a live event in uh, business enterprise or essential. Okay. Uh, next question from uh, S. Nanda. We have, can we integrate third party Zoom apps with Teams and what are the security concerns related to our tenant users? See, uh, the security piece of Zoom, I'm not well aware of that, but the first question asks is whether we can integrate. The answer is yes. There is a ready-made connector available for Zoom, which I can show you now. Here it is. So if you go over here and you go to Teams, there is one uh, when you click on this plus tab and when you search for Zoom, if I can see it from here. Yeah, here it is. Okay. So you can add it into the Teams wherever you want it. And there will be again a small chatbot which will be uh, readily available by Zoom. And here you can uh, do these kinds of things with uh, Zoom directly into Microsoft Teams. Okay. I hope that answers your question. Yes, pretty much looks like uh, Neeraj. So we have more questions from SS Nanda, which we can address uh, offline, taking up more questions from uh, other audience uh, members also. Uh, so Malay Das Sharma asks, uh, can we use Gtalk with MS Teams? I think not. Let me see. I am not sure if Gtalk is available. No, Gtalk is not available. Sorry, but Gtalk is not available in this thing. Okay. okay. Uh, how to schedule a meeting with external invites? Uh, I am not finding external mails while inviting the team. So one of the participants is asking this question. See, by default in calendar, uh, in the Teams app calendar, you won't be able to see the cache contacts that you get while in your Outlook. Okay, So there is a couple of ways that you can uh, schedule a meeting. One is directly from the Teams calendar app. Other is your Outlook desktop app. Uh, let me see if I can show you. Here it is. So if you yeah, go that would be your... interesting because next uh, question is from Manik, who is also asking how to schedule Teams meeting via Outlook. Yeah, so if yeah. you if you go to your Outlook calendar, you will see this plugin that is get added uh, added over here. Now these things get added only when you install the Teams application in your uh, system. Uh, you can also add them uh, manually by asking your IT to bring that DLL file into that appropriate place and you can use them. So you just have to click on new Teams meeting over here and it will be a normal uh, you know uh, interface it will be a normal interface and here you can see the information that you have to use 
Now over here in required, you just have to use the email address of the participant. The email address could be anything, okay? Gmail, Yahoo, Rediff, any uh, private domain also, as well as public domain also. And you just have to send it across, okay? But before, uh, after sending it, make sure that you remember the meeting options to be changed so that you know uh, how your participants will be added into the meeting and what will be the options available for those users. So this is a way that you can be used. Okay. I hope that uh, is clear. Yes, uh, looks like Neeraj. Uh, okay, next question we have. Uh, once we record the meeting, then what is the file format it gets stored in? See, uh, basically the file format uh, uh, is not, you know, we are, uh, it's, it's a different code stream that is uh, used or stored in Microsoft stream. But when you download it, it will be downloading in an MP4 file format. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, what is the maximum user limit in live webinar? Live event. Live, That's what live event. Yeah. Live event can host up to ten thousand attendees. Okay. And uh, there are there are three pieces into it. You can uh, uh, organize it via a small group or uh, only organization wide or a public so you can decide and the total live count today is 10,000 and it is about to change in future to 20,000. OK, uh, next question we have. Can anyone in the organization save videos to stream? Yes, the answer is yes, you can do that. Okay. There is an option of uploading a video in stream over here if you can see it. OK, uh, next question we have from Tejash and they're asking, can we store the meeting recording locally as sometimes we may need to send the recording to client producers? So yes, uh, we can download no. it right after you, the meeting. You can down, yes, you can download it and you can uh, share it via your OneDrive or uh, some other third party application which you're using for sharing the documents or the video files. All right. So uh, although uh, we have a lot of more questions that are pouring in, uh, but we have limited time at hand. And uh, so I think that was the last question of the day. And thank you so much for the demo and all the information that you shared. And thank you to our wonderful audience for being a part of this webinar. And once again, we have one more webinar in this series scheduled. That's the last one for April 30th. And we would love to meet you there also. And if you wish to avail a new course Microsoft Teams adoption program for your organization, please reach out to us at connect at mb.co.in and we would be very happy to help you out. OK, uh, so uh, I think that's all we have for the day and uh, have a wonderful, wonderful day ahead. Thank you, everyone.